These images rocked the international media and shocked Pakistan. Imran Khan, a superstar cricketer turned politician, is adored by millions and also hated by his opponents. As a populist leader, he has divided a highly conservative religious country with his ability to oversimplify complex problems. Khan has used Islamism to appease the fanatics while promoting his own rosy brand of Islam to accommodate the moderates. Like many young Pakistani boys, I too was captivated by his charm and charisma and I yearned to be like him. However, my unwavering support for him endured until 2020 when my infatuation came to a sudden halt. So why did I wake up from my delusion while millions of others remain in trance? Today, many are wondering if Pakistan will still be around in 2024. Will Pakistan disintegrate or will it finally be able to limit its powerful military's role to defense only? Love him or hate him, the only man in the history of Pakistan who has challenged the might of the Pakistani military is Imran Khan. But who really is Imran Khan? Let's start with a bit of history. Videos like these do get demonetized and hence lose their reach. So please like, share and subscribe. And if you like the content, you can be a member or patron or hit that super thanks button. Let's get back to it. Imran Khan rose to global fame thanks to his exceptional cricketing skills and good looks during the 70s and 80s. He was adored by millions of women worldwide, while men aspired to emulate him. Extremely nice, isn't he? Yeah. He's an extremely good-looking man, isn't he? Yes, he is. Does everyone think that? Most of the girls do, I think. Do they? Is yeah. that why there are so many young girls here tonight? <laughs> yes, I think so, but most of the girls have bought the ticket because they wanted to pay tribute to the national hero. However, he wasn't just a good-looking young cricketer who hung out with Hollywood actresses and British socialites. He was also an accomplished and efficient philanthropist. Khan leveraged his immense popularity to raise funds for Shokat Khanum, a cancer hospital named after his mother, who tragically passed away due to cancer in 1985. I first saw Imran Khan when I was seven or eight years old as he visited my school Cathedral High School to raise funds for his cancer hospital. I vividly recall pestering my family and neighbors to buy 20 rupee tickets and I managed to sell two ticket books. His self-belief, ego and confidence are commensurate with his political ambitions. After retiring from international cricket, having achieved the sport's ultimate prize, the World Cup in 1992, Imran Khan set his sights on a new goal, becoming the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Unlike many before him, he did not join any existing political party in the country, despite receiving promising offers from both sides. If he was to go into politics, he'd be the right man to have on your team, would he? <laughs> I offered him a long time ago, but he declined. I don't know why. Sensible. My That's offer is still valid. <laughs> he saw himself as too big to be a subordinate to anyone. And so he established his own political party, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf, or the Movement for Justice, in April 1996. In 1988, Pakistan emerged from the military dictatorship of General Ziaul Haq and restarted its experiment with democracy. At the time, the Pakistani political landscape was dominated by two parties, the Pakistan People's Party, led by the late Benazir Bhutto, daughter of Zulfqar Ali Bhutto, and the Pakistan Muslim League, led by Nawaz Sharif, propped up by the late dictator General Ziaul Haq. Both leaders became prime ministers at least twice between 1988 and 1999, but neither could complete their respective five-year terms. Imran Khan accused both leaders of corruption. The two major leaders also accused each other of financial wrongdoing. While I personally believe that there is a lot of truth in these accusations, none of them were ever proven in Pakistani or overseas courts. In 1999, Pakistan again fell under the rule of a military dictator named General Pervez Musharraf. He claimed that both political parties were corrupt and that Pakistan needed saving. In the aftermath of his takeover, both party leaders fled overseas to avoid corruption trials. Initially, Western powers imposed sanctions on Pakistan for overthrowing a democratic government. However, luckily for Musharraf, on September 11, 2001, Osama bin Laden and his associates decided to fly planes into the World Trade Center. Pakistan 
Iran became a frontline state in the war against terror, and Musharraf was suddenly hobnobbing with George W. Bush and other world leaders, and the world forgot about Benazir Bhutto, Nawaz Sharif, and democracy in Pakistan. Despite Imran Khan's immense popularity as a cricketer, he initially struggled to establish himself in the field of politics. He remained in the political backwaters for the next 15 years. At first, he supported Pervez Musharraf, but later became an ardent critic of the general due to his close alliance with the United States in the war against terror, which earned him the nickname Taliban Khan. In 2002 general elections, Imran Khan's party only won one seat in the parliament, and for the next five years, Musharraf dominated Pakistani politics, leaving Imran Khan relatively obscure. Imran Khan claims that he was offered many seats by Musharraf, but he didn't want to take the military support, a charge Musharraf denied. The reason why we back General Musharraf is only one reason, that he will keep the crooked and the corrupt politicians who neither our judiciary nor our election commission has been able to keep them out. However, in 2007, the movement against the strongman Musharraf gathered momentum. <laughs> and Benazir Bhutto made a sudden comeback in Pakistan, holding political rallies and posing strong opposition to Musharraf. Unfortunately, her assassination in December 2007 by the Taliban changed the political landscape once again. Even though Benazir Bhutto, the first female prime minister in the Muslim world, was gone, people were not ready to let her go. As a result, in 2008 general elections, they voted for her party, putting her husband, Asif Ali Zardari, in charge of Pakistan. Later on, Imran Khan claimed that Nawaz Sharif had promised to boycott the general elections of 2008 because Musharraf was not stepping down as president. However, when the time for elections came, Nawaz Sharif decided to contest them, leaving Imran Khan unprepared for the 2008 general elections. Imran Khan sat the elections out, Zardari became the president, and Nawaz Sharif became the opposition leader. Imran Khan was left angry and bitter. Musharraf was ousted, and was never to be seen again. For the good of the country, I, I have decided to resign here. from my post. Mus After this betrayal, something changed in Imran Khan. Maybe he thought that nothing is sacred in politics and the word of a politician means nothing. It was at this time when Imran Khan started getting traction in Pakistani politics. Initially, he did not want to gain power with the military support, but now, he saw nothing wrong with it. In Pakistan, nothing happens without the Pakistani military's approval. Sometimes they take the leading role, as seen with General Zia or Musharraf, and sometimes they take a backseat and become puppeteers. The military had decided that they were not going to take a front seat for the foreseeable future, but they still wanted their guy in the office. The tried and tested parties of Nawaz Sharif's PMLN and the late Benazir Bhutto's PPP, now taken over by her husband Zardari, were not enough anymore. The Pakistani military needed a third force, and Imran Khan raised his hand to be their guy. Unlike in the 90s and early noughties, this time Imran Khan was willing to accept support from anyone, including the military. And then came 30th of October 2011. Imran Khan led what is arguably the largest political rally in Pakistan's history at Minada, Pakistan. I still remember the date as if it was yesterday. Even his worst critics admitted that this was huge. However, they started claiming that the rally was organized with the support of the military establishment, specifically General Pasha, the head of Pakistan's spy agency, the ISI. After 15 years of principled politics that achieved Imran Khan nothing, he instantly became a political heavyweight overnight with a little help from the Pakistani military. This support, however, was not enough as the military was still not ready to put the reins of Pakistan in Imran Khan's hands. In the general elections of 2013, Imran Khan's party managed to win only 35 seats in the National Assembly, but he won the provincial government of the northern province of KPK. Imran Khan led nationwide protests and sit-ins, claiming massive rigging in the general elections. However, none of his demands were met, and Nawaz Sharif's political party finished its term until the 2018 general elections. 
During this term, Nawaz Sharif's government increasingly clashed with Pakistan's military. In 2017, Sharif was disqualified as Prime Minister on corruption charges and replaced internally by Shahid Khakan Abbasi. Imran Khan took full advantage of the rift between Sharif and the military and further assured the military establishment that he was ready to be their puppet. Imran Khan became the 22nd Prime Minister of Pakistan in the 2018 general elections thanks to the rift between the country's status quo political parties and the military. However, all opposition parties alleged massive rigging and called Imran Khan the selected Prime Minister instead of elected. The honeymoon period for Khan's government was short-lived as all opposition parties decided to teach him a taste of his own medicine through the politics of agitation. Imran Khan had been making toll claims that once he came to power, Pakistan would rapidly become a superpower. He appealed to the masses by sending soft signals of Islamism and portraying himself as the leader of the Muslim world. Who can forget his 40-minute rant at the annual UN General Assembly on 25th of September 2020. And my belief is, la la illa, there is no God but one. And we will fight. And when, and when, and when, and when a nuclear armed country fights to the end, it will have consequences far beyond the borders. He complained about rising Islamophobia, which was overwhelmingly well received in Pakistan. After Imran Khan's speech, the United Nations declared March 15th as International Day to Combat Islamophobia, which he took full credit for. This move helped him appease both hardliners and moderates. He also tried to create a new Islamic bloc with his ideological heroes Mahathir Mohammed of Malaysia and Recep Tayyip Erdogan of Turkey. This was not well received by Saudi Arabia's strongman Mohammed bin Salman and Imran Khan was forced to cancel one of his visits to Malaysia. This triumvirate was short-lived and did not materialize. At the beginning of 2020, as the world was grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, Imran Khan sought to maintain his public support through populist measures, including an increasingly anti-Western stance. While anti-American sentiment had always been strong in Pakistan, Khan amplified it, blaming the West for keeping Pakistan hostage to its world order. He emphasized the need to distance Pakistan from the West and strengthen ties with China. On the one hand, Khan decried Islamophobia in the West, but on the other hand, he remained completely silent on the mistreatment of Uyghur Muslims in China. In one hilarious interview, he basically said, China gives us money, therefore we can't talk about the mistreatment of the Uyghurs. Check this out. Prime Minister, why are you so outspoken about Islamophobia in Europe and the United States, but totally silent about the genocide of Muslims in Western China? What uh, our conversations have been with the Chinese, this is not the case, according to them. The evidence is just overwhelming. Whatever issues we have with the Chinese, we speak to them behind closed doors. China has been a gri- one of the greatest friends to us in our most difficult times, when we were really struggling Our economy was struggling. China came to our rescue. In October 2020, after the murder of Samuel Paty for showing a cartoon of Prophet Muhammad, Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, displayed the cartoons of Muhammad on government buildings in Paris. This move was not well received by Pakistan and Islamist parties like TLP demanded that Imran Khan sever all ties with France. The EU threatened Pakistan with economic sanctions if they expelled the French ambassador. The EU being Pakistan's largest trading partner, Imran Khan's government decided to go with money rather than the honor of the Prophet. When France ambassador European Union the TLP organized nationwide protests and Imran Khan was forced to crack down on the Islamist protesters. The crackdown resulted in the death of an estimated 120 TLP protesters at least. This confused a lot of Islamists who thought that Imran Khan was on their side after his speech at the UN's General Assembly a month earlier. My third point is Islamophobia. 
In terms of the economy, Imran Khan performed reasonably well under the circumstances. The economy grew at 6% in 2021, the industry grew significantly, and foreign remittances by overseas Pakistanis helped Imran Khan boost Pakistan's foreign reserves to a massive and unprecedented $22 billion in 2021. The foreign reserves had been increasing each year since Imran Khan took office in 2018. The tax collection net was increased and overall he was doing well. Imran Khan took some major welfare steps such as launching an NHS style Medicare system and further improving the poverty welfare payments for the poorest. Despite his economic successes, Imran Khan's position as the Prime Minister was not secure. Powerful forces that had helped him come to power were no longer content with him, as he had become too ambitious and too popular for the military's liking. In 2019, the Director General of Pakistan's spy agency, ISI, Lieutenant General Asim Mani, and remember this name, we'll come back to it, approached Imran Khan with information about a massive corruption scandal involving Imran Khan's wife, Bushra Bibi, and her friend, Farah Gogi. Imran Khan did not like it and basically told him to shut up and get lost. Asim Munir will not forget this insult. As a result, Munir was replaced by Imran's loyal supporter, Lieutenant General Faz Hamid. Although the head of the army, General Bajwa, was unhappy with this decision, he did not intervene as Imran Khan was still very popular at the time. Nevertheless, the love affair between Imran and the military was over and cracks were beginning to appear. In 2021, General Bajwa, the chief of army, wanted to replace Imran's loyal DG ISI General Fares with one of his own men, Lieutenant General Nadeem Anjum. Initially, Imran tried to delay the appointment of the new general, but eventually he succumbed to General Bajwa's pressure, and on November 19th, 2021, he approved the appointment of Lieutenant General Nadeem Anjum as a spy chief. Imran was not happy that his own choice had been removed from Islamabad and sent to Peshawar as a corps commander. Imran wanted to replace General Bajwa with General Fares in December 2021, but his plans were destroyed by General Bajwa. Imran's top supporter in Pakistan's military was now gone. Some claim that in a desperate attempt to save his government, Imran even offered to extend the military chief's tenure by six months, a charge Imran now denies. Everyone held their breath for the next few months. Imran ramped up the corruption investigations against his political opponents and the Sharifs and Zadaris felt cornered. Some argue that if Imran had not pushed his opponents into a corner, he might not have forced them to oust him as Prime Minister. Then came Putin's invasion of Ukraine, and while the power struggle between the Khans, the military, the Sharifs, and the Zardaris was ongoing, a key player was left out of the equation. The United States of America. On February 22nd, 2022, Imran Khan traveled to Russia and met with Putin on the eve of the invasion, causing upset among the US and the West. Initially, Khan claimed that the meeting had been scheduled months in advance and they were not sure if Putin was going to invade Ukraine or not. While the whole West was in shock as Putin's tanks rolled into a fellow democracy, Khan was cozying up to perhaps the most hated man in the world, Putin. After Putin's invasion of Ukraine, tensions rose between the US and Pakistan. Imran Khan's meeting with Putin on the eve of invasion only fueled the fire. While Imran Khan insisted that the meeting had been planned for months in advance and they were unsure if Putin would invade Ukraine, the US and the West were understandably upset. I promise you I had no idea. I arrived the night before. I, I was only there for one night. Next morning when I wake up, I discover that this Ukraine adventure had started. Rather than voicing their protest to Imran Khan, who had previously complained about President Joe Biden not even answering his phone calls, the US directed their concerns to General Bajwa. Bajwa threw Imran Khan under the bus and claimed that it was all Imran Khan's doing, while Imran Khan said it was the military's decision to go to Russia. Meanwhile, domestically, Imran Khan was facing a no-confidence motion from the opposition led by Shabar Sharif. Sharif's move was seen as a desperate attempt to prevent his own imprisonment as Imran Khan had been aggressively pursuing corruption investigations against the opposition. On 10th of April 2022, the no-confidence motion passed with 174 votes 
a majority in the National Assembly, resulting in Imran Khan losing confidence of the House and ceasing to hold the office of the Prime Minister. Needless to say, this was done with Bajwa's blessing. Imran Khan was removed from the Prime Minister's house. Some claim that he resisted and was slapped by the men in uniform. If Pakistan disintegrates and movies are made about it, this will be the pivotal moment in Pakistan's history, or what would be left of it. Imran Khan was not the type to take his ousting lying down. He began holding rallies all across Pakistan, claiming that the US was behind it, although the US denied any involvement. Well, in his first interview with international media since being removed from power, he tells me, that is Imran Khan, how he believes the United States interfered to have him ousted. Imran Khan cited a cryptic letter allegedly sent by a US diplomat Donald Liu, which instructed Pakistan's ambassador to the US, Asad Majid, to remove him through a no-confidence motion if they wanted better relations with the US. On the 7th of March, Becky, Under Secretary of State uh, in the US, who's responsible for South Asia, he tells the ambassador that unless you get rid of your Prime Minister Imran Khan in a vote of no confidence, which, by the way, hadn't been tabled as yet, but he seemed to know about it, he said, unless you get rid of it, Pakistan will suffer consequences. And then goes on to say, of course, if you get rid of him through the vote of no confidence, all will be forgiven. Such arrogance, apart from anything else. By the way, Becky, this guy should be sacked for bad manners and sheer arrogance. In a purported audio leak, Imran Khan can be heard saying, we only have to play on this cipher. We don't have to name any country. We only have to play with this, that this date of no trust motion was decided before it was moved against him. Basically saying that this was all done by the US. Imran Khan enjoys a cult-like following and the audio leak did nothing to diminish his claims among his supporters. They believe since Imran Khan welcomed the US's hasty retreat from Afghanistan, referring to it as the shackles of slavery have been broken by the Afghans, coupled with Imran Khan's visit to Russia. The US did not like him and hence they removed him. जब आप ज़ेनी गुलाम बनते हैं तो ये याद रखें असल गुलामी से ज़्यादा बुरी ज़ेनी गुलामी है ज़ेनी गुलामी की ज़ंजीरें तोड़ना ज़्यादा मुश्किल होता है जो अभी अफगानिस्तान में गुलामी की ज़ंजीरें तो तोड़ दी उन्होंने लेकिन जो ज़ेनी गुलामी की ज़ंजीरें वो नहीं टूटती वो जो कपड़े पहनते हैं आपको वो पहनने पड़ते हैं उनके सारे फैशन आपको अपनाने पड़ते हैं क्योंकि आप समझते हैं वो बेहतर है आपसे और कभी भी एक गुलाम बड़े काम नहीं कर सकता for the next few months, Imran kept blaming the US and General Bajwa for his ouster and mobilized his followers. The Pakistani military had never faced a challenge like this before. However, in September 2022, Imran Khan was shot at during a political rally. The former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has been shot and injured. His party says an unidentified gunman opened fire at a rally hitting his foot. They're calling it an assassination attempt. Imran blamed the military for the assassination attempt, while the military claimed it was a random religious fanatic who saw Imran Khan as a blasphemer. Yes, sir, I have done this because these people were doing it with Imran Khan. And I have not seen this thing. And I have killed him. I have tried to kill 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 him. You might be wondering, Haris, didn't you say Imran Khan was an Islamist? Well, that's the beauty of Islamism. No matter how Islamic you claim to be, there's always someone who thinks you are not Islamic enough. Whoever plays with this fire eventually gets burnt by it. For some people, you are too Islamic. For some people, you're not Islamic enough. It's better left alone. But Imran Khan doesn't understand that. General Bajwa retired in November 2022 and was replaced by General Asim Muni. Yes, the same guy I told you to make a mental note of. Okay, now that you have a brief background on the situation, let's talk about Imran Khan's arrest on 9th of May that made global headlines. Despite facing hundreds of corruption cases, on 9th of May, Imran appeared before the Islamabad High Court on a corruption scandal involving Al-Haq University. Without delving into the details of this case, I believe the evidence against Imran Khan is strong, but that's not our place to decide. However, 
the decision to arrest him was incredibly stupid since he had not absconded and was appearing before the court as required. These visuals of Imran Khan's arrest shook Pakistan and made global headlines, despite warnings from his supporters that they would burn the country down if he was arrested. The government and military proceeded with the decision. As promised, his supporters reacted with violent protests, resulting in chaos and total breakdown of law and order. Protests erupted nationwide in Pakistan and unruly mobs burned down military establishments and public property. Never before in Pakistan's history had the military been humiliated and resisted like this. In Lahore, the home of a corps commander was burned and the military guards fled, leaving the commander at the mercy of the mob. An air force base was attacked and a dummy plane was set alight, while police and military personnel were seen running for their lives. Hundreds of people reportedly have been killed by anti-riot forces. Imran Khan's party workers did not call for calm and instead appeared to be enjoying the total capitulation of the once strong military. This event is unprecedented and Pakistan's military has never been challenged in this way. The military have overthrown Pakistan's governments at least three times openly and numerous times unofficially through political maneuvering. There are also reports of mutiny in Pakistan's military with some generals refusing to take orders from the military chief, General Asim Muni, who was insulted by Imran Khan over corruption allegations against his wife and her best friend, Farah Gogi. Since Imran Khan's arrest, hundreds of political leaders of his party have also been arrested. Amid this chaos on 12th of May, just two days after Imran Khan's arrest, the Supreme Court of Pakistan declared it illegal and ordered the police, which is the military, to release him. This is groundbreaking as never in the history of Pakistan has this happened before. The military has succumbed to public pressure. Imran Khan's supporters now believe that their rebellion is the reason behind his release and the military is scared. They have shaken the oldest and most powerful institution in Pakistan the Pakistan army. If the military takes one misstep, it could result in a civil war. Imran's supporters are running amok and like their leader, they have only one demand to make Imran Khan the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Some believe that General Asim Munir is settling an old score and is a stooge of the Sharif. Others believe that Imran Khan is a fascist who wants to overthrow the current setup and become the unchallenged ruler of Pakistan. I don't like Imran Khan's constant appeasement and further Islamization of Pakistan, but I cannot deny that he is the most popular leader of the country. If free and fair elections were held tomorrow, Imran Khan would not only become the Prime Minister of Pakistan, but would also have a two-thirds majority, which would allow him to change the constitution of Pakistan. I shudder to think how bad this could be for Pakistan in the short term. Imran Khan's ego, my way or the highway attitude, and his own version of Islam have the potential to set Pakistan back by 30 years. However, if we all believe in democracy, we may have to accept it. The biggest hurdle to Pakistan's democracy in Pakistan has historically been the role of the military in politics. If Pakistan wants to become a true democracy, the role of the military must be limited and Imran Khan may just have done that. Imran Khan has sent the military running for their lives. He is openly naming and shaming the generals unfiltered and as a result, the Pakistani public has never hated their military like this before. The hold of Pakistan's military is weakening. If the military fights back or gets rid of Imran Khan, there will be total anarchy and nothing will be left of Pakistan. If Imran Khan manages to get rid of the military's role in the government, we might truly end up with real democracy in Pakistan. If you like my video and would like to support my channel, then you can be my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash xmuslim or you can simply buy me a coffee.